Let's do it. Meat delicious and contentious. With the environmental costs of raising huge amounts of livestock and the treatment of factory farm animals, some argue that eating meat is inhumane, hurting the planet, and all around bad for man and womankind. So what do we do? Only eat the most expensive cuts of steak? Not eat meat at all? I mean, if today's meat industry turns so many people off, where can we go from here? One possibility takes us into the laboratory. Scientists have been geeking out over artificially making meat. And it looks like we're not too far off from such a reality. I'm Dolly, and today on Zoet. <laughs> today on Zoetic, we're gonna talk about the future of meat. In the coming years, what will surf and turf look like? Will we be 3D printing our steaks at home? Could lab meat be a solution to world hunger? The idea of making meat rather than raising it has actually been around for a long time, and not just in sci-fi. In 1932, Winston Churchill envisioned a future in which we'd only grow parts of the chicken that we'd most likely eat, in order to escape the absurdity of growing a whole chicken. Maybe Churchill wasn't that far off. Scientists have been dabbling with DIY cell growth for skin and bone repair for decades. The process is called regenerative medicine, or tissue engineering, and the magic is all in the stem cells. Stem cells are like blank canvases. They're basically cells that haven't yet decided what they're gonna look like. So when they're given a little direction, they can turn into specific types of tissue, like bone or muscle or meat. Nice. In 2013, researchers in the Netherlands demoed the first ever stem cell burger, made by replicating cow muscle stem cell in a mold. People who tasted it even lived to give some feedback. Though, to be honest, the reviews didn't sound that great to me. Two stars. And this is just the beginning. Combining the stem cell process with 3D printing technology means we could potentially mechanize the creation of lab meat, meaning lots of meat without lots of land or lots of killing. 3D printed meat also means we may be able to make cheeseburgers at a worldwide scale. Companies are already 3D printing organs and other human body parts for the sake of science and research, so 3D printed meat isn't that far-fetched. It's worth considering, especially since we've got nearly 800 million people going hungry on this planet, and few realistic solutions for solving this issue. But if it's able to succeed on a commercial scale, 3D printed meat could bring protein to parts of the world that are scarce on meat. Another big benefit? Food safety. Lab-grown meat would be created in sterile environments, free of contamination like E. coli or salmonella. 3D printing is kind of like icing a cupcake. You've got a tube of frosting and a shape to follow. In 3D bioprinting, your tube of frosting is a concoction of thousands of live stem cells, and your shape might be a kidney, or a liver, or a piece of steak. But once you've got the factory set up, you can let it run its course. I mean, if people have been fantasizing about synthetic meat for decades, and we might just have the technology, why can't I buy a lab-grown beef patty at the supermarket yet? Well, to start, 3D printing animal parts and organs is still quite experimental and expensive. Remember the stem cell burger I mentioned earlier? That little thing cost about $300,000 to make, and reviews said it was pretty tough to chew on. Turns out that replicating the flavor of meat in a lab is no small task, and feeding the world is a completely different beast from small-scale experimentation. But it seems the bigger issue may be our squeamish human reaction towards the process itself. Even for me, and I eat anything, the idea of eating a stem cell steak still feels alien. Like I'm eating something that's not of this world. Blech. Plus, leaving food up to technology and science brings up weird memories of controversies around GMOs and foods injected with hormones. It's just not that appetizing to think about your steak being tinkered with in a lab. I mean, lab-grown doesn't have the same ring as grass-fed. Squeamishness and cost aside, the benefits may still outweigh the hesitations. Imagine all the land we would save, the chickens, the cows. We could all feel a little less guilty for not participating in cruel animal farming practices. And who knows, maybe vegetarians would even be down to order a 3D printed burger at the steakhouse. But it still seems we have a long way to go before any of us are dining on lab meat. Even one of the most funded innovators in this space, a company called Modern Meadows, is starting with something a little less intimidating. 3D printed leather because you can't eat it. Still, meat of the future may not come from slaughterhouses, and it remains to be seen what that will mean for diets around the world. So for the sake of Mother Earth and world peace, are we down to let other people play with the food on our plates? Would you actually eat this meat? I mean, I think I would. I'd probably eat anything really except celery. If I'd be down to try some lab-grown meat, hit us up in the comments, subscribe, and tell us what you want us to cover in the future. You wanna talk about more weird stuff? I'm here for you.